Well, hello everybody and welcome to our spiritual Eucharist today. Uh, this has been recorded partly, I think, in both churches, so you should see throughout the rest of the service bits that have been done in St Mark's and in St David's where I am today. It's great to have you with us. All the information should be on your ordinary time spiritual communion and we'll go ahead. But thank you for joining us for worship today. We're going to start with our first hymn. Wrestling in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the question. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you, and keep you in the love of Christ. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you, no secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please say with me. Heavenly Father, 
We have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gloria. Almighty and ever-living God, clothed in majesty, whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple in substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us prepare ourselves for the word, the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Malachi, chapter 3. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers against the adulterers, 
against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm is a portion from Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up. O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up. O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Here ends the psalm. The second reading is from the book Letter to the Hebrews, chapter 2. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades, who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God! For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is the word of the Lord. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the Lord of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the Lord of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout looking forward to and the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people a light for the revelation of the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign 
that will be opposed to that to that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too there was also a prophet Anna the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher she was of a great age having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple but worshipped there with fasting and prayer. Night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the Lord of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The Lord grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and in favour of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I hope all your decorations and your cards are finally down because Christmas has come and gone. The gifts have been unwrapped and Santa hopefully is back in the North Pole waiting for next year, getting all those gifts ready again. So we may have given gifts and we may have received gifts. And for some people, this is what Christmas is about. And it kind of is for us Christians. And I'll talk about that a bit later. Other people would have enjoyed what last year was an extremely limited family get-together. But hopefully you were all able to share a meal, to laugh and to talk. Of course, last year also saw a Christmas where there was a lot of pain and heartache and grieving. And for some people, it was anything but fun. It was anything but a celebration. And also, there may have been people who were lonely, there were shattered families, there may have had people with other health concerns and also financial problems. So Christmas, as we can see, means different things to different people. All of this, though, is the cultural side. So I wonder what Christmas meant to you spiritually. Did you manage to take time to withdraw from the celebration for a moment and offer yourself as a gift to God? That is what we are, whether we realise it or not. God sees us as a gift of love if we receive him into our lives. And let's face it, we accept the much, much better gift of Christ who loves us unconditionally. Today we celebrate the presentation of Christ and the gospel reading from Luke 2, chapter 22 to 40, tells us about a man called Simeon who waited an entire lifetime for Christ to be born. Simeon seemed to only have one goal in life, and that was to see the Saviour. Scripture says he was waiting or longing for the consolation of Israel, and it was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he wouldn't die until he'd seen the Saviour. Simeon, it also says, was a righteous and devout man and full of the Holy Spirit. Yet he noticed there was something incomplete in his life. Without Jesus, he knew his spiritual life was incomplete. Simeon was not about to pass from this world to the next without meeting his saviour. He knew that knowing Jesus was more important than anything he could ever imagine. Now, I'm guessing like me, we all have dreams and we all have plans and we all have wants for our lives. There's nothing that I would like better in my life than a Mercedes 65 SL. But I understand that that either may never, ever happen, but it's not the most important thing in my life. So there are things that we've been waiting, that we've been longing for in our lives, things that are on our minds constantly, maybe being financially secure or wanting to find the right partner or career, maybe wanting the best for our children and grandchildren. Lots of things take over our minds on a daily basis. Simeon, though, he knew what his goal was. More than anything else, Simeon wanted Jesus. Simeon actually became elderly waiting for that moment. But his dream came true. His waiting was over and his seeking was over. The odd thing I find is that sometimes we need to take a chance on God. I've known many, many family and friends who say, 
that there is no God, but they've never taken a chance to accept God into their lives. There are other people that I know as well who have been Christians. They've asked God for blessings and they've received so many blessings and yet they've fallen away from God and from their church community. Sometimes two people can be in the same Sunday morning service, hear the same message, and one might say, wow, I really felt the presence of God today. And the other person might think, oh, that was a bit boring. I wish I'd stayed home and watched telly instead. Even though Simeon was an old man, he never, ever lost hope. Every moment of every day, he was expecting for the coming of the Lord. What expectations, I wonder, do we have when we come to church, whether it be on an online service or in our church buildings? Do we expect God to speak to us? Do we try and listen out for God talking to us? Do we expect to be blessed? Do we expect healing and forgiveness? Or do we come because it just feels like the right thing to do? Simeon personally received Jesus. Can you imagine the joy of an elderly man spending a whole life waiting for one special moment, seeing the child? He didn't admire him from a distance. He didn't say how cute he was. He didn't say that he didn't want to pick him up just in case he threw up on him. Simeon saw that wonderful opportunity to cuddle that child in his arms and bless God. What a feeling it must have been to hold the creator in his arms. Simeon personally received the Christ child and into his life. Simeon got to this point not by accident. He waited, he expected, and he received. Now, the other day, I was on a mental health course along with all the clergy of, the, uh, of our archdeaconry. And Reverend Andy from Harden mentioned the poet R.S. Thomas, who's a Welsh poet. And one of his poems that she was talking about mentioned the word waiting and what it meant. And I've managed to source that poem. And this is the last sort of verse, if you like, from the poem called Kneeling. Moments of great calm, kneeling before an altar, of wood in a stone church, in summer, waiting for the God to speak. Prompt me, God, but not yet, when I speak. Though it be you who speak through me, something is lost. The meaning is in the waiting. Once again, Simeon waited. He expected and he received. The meaning was in the waiting. Simeon had his priorities right. He had to personally receive Jesus before he was ready to die. And after picking up that baby in his arms, he said, that famous name from the Nunc Dimittis, now let your servant depart in peace for my eyes have seen your salvation. Simeon is telling us something today that is the same relevance as it had back then. We need a longing for Christ. He should be our life's goal at the top of our dreams and aspirations. We need to be willing to wait for him in our prayers. I'm sure you've heard the line that things should be in his time and not our time. And even then, sometimes the answer to our prayers might be not yet or even no. But when he comes to us, we need to take the chance and receive him fully into our lives as we would anybody that we dearly, dearly loved. I know the Christian life isn't easy. I know you know the same. And I know that we can be blessed in many ways, though. And it's worth taking that chance on our Lord. So today, think of yourself as that gift and offer that gift back to our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Please join with me in affirming our faith. I believe and trust in God the Father who created all that is. I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as we gather together well apart, may we be ever mindful of those who cannot access the technology needed to join us and who continue to worship privately in their own hearts. We ask you, Lord, to keep our faith strong until we can once again meet physically together in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God, as we celebrate the presentation of your son in the temple, we remember all who would have been baptised over the last 12 months and welcomed into your church family. We pray too that when able, those families will return to bring their loved ones into your fold. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as we listen to the faith and prophecies of Simeon and Anna, may we continue to grow in faith, to heed the word that you sent us, and to listen when you call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask your continued blessing on our NHS, key workers, emergency services and armed forces, as they continue to help us through the pandemic. We ask too that you watch over all teachers as they continue to provide work for their pupils, both at school and online. We pray too for all parents homeschooling. May they be strengthened in the knowledge that they are doing the best they can under extraordinary circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you alone know the true pain that we feel, physically, mentally, and emotionally. May you watch over all those of our parish and those, those known only unto us at this time as they struggle with their own difficulties. We pray too for Beryl Hodson, Jim Price, Dave Middleton, Eric Owen, Heather and Michael Wright and Molly Ashton. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, who waits for us at the last, be with all who you have called to be with you over recent weeks, remembering especially Jack Hutton, Sylvia Whitehouse, Ronald Williams, Charles Wingate, George Adams, Glenna Williams, Vera Coletti, Ron Fish and Tony Ashton. May you be with their families and friends at this most difficult of times. We pray too for our nation as it surpasses the grim milestone of death from COVID-19. And may we always remember that behind each number lies a person and a grieving family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we look upon our candles as a symbol of light, warmth and hope, may we be filled with your light to shine your love on those in need surrounded by your warmth and full of hope for the days ahead. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same, Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. So now we come to the notices. Just to let you know that uh, we received a letter from the Bishop and the Bishop's office about worship at this time. And he's saying this in the letter. Dear friends, I wrote to you at the beginning of the month and my belief is in the current circumstances, it is right, it was right to cease public worship and asked you to take that action unless you had the support of your congregation and could be certain of meeting the highest standards of hygiene and safeguarding from infection measures required by the Welsh Government. Since then, I have consulted with my colleagues on the bench and we are now of the review to affirm the advice I gave you at the start of the month. And again, that was from Bishop Gregory. And he was basically speaking about this idea at the moment of just having as many online services as we can. So I've taken the really sad decision, but I'm gonna go with what the Bishop says, because I know it says that we could be open, but we have so many vulnerable people among us. And the guidelines are so strict 
that I just don't think it's the right time for us to open at the moment. So I'm praying and hoping that we can get open for Holy Week to come to churches and then do what we did at Christmas, where we can have a booking system for our Easter services in one of each of the, in the churches. I'm really sorry to do this, but I just, I know someone said to me the other day, you're being cautious. And I think probably I am being cautious, but I want us all to be safe. And more than that, I want us all to be well. So when we do come together, we're not having to worry about anything. And we've had quite a few people in our own congregations um, have COVID and have COVID symptoms as well at this time, more, more now than before. So I just want to just protect our little family. So I'm so sorry to say that, but I will let you know as soon as we're able to meet properly again and we can uh, cover all the bases on those restrictions so for now just keep checking your pew sheets which i'll obviously put online and um, you'll see all the different things that are going on it's the same at the moment with pastoral visits because we've not all had the, the yeah, I keep calling it a jab, but you know what I mean. We haven't all had the vaccination. But if you know someone that would like a phone call, please let either Reverend Helen or me know and we'll give some, uh, them a bell just to give it. And also, of course, the CDs. Can I thank everybody? Loads of people have sent me messages and cards and phone calls to say how much those CDs have meant to them. And it's just so lovely for me to hear that, that you still feel connected to the church and, and to your, our family here together. So thank you very much. And um, once you've had your CD and listened to it, you don't need to keep it anymore because I'm just running them off for you. So uh, you can either pass them on to somebody else or chuck them in the, in the bin or the recycling. Um, this uh, coming week, we are going to ask for prayers for the following people, for Beryl Hodgson, for Jim Price, Dave Middleton, Eric Owen, Heather and Michael Wright, and Molly Ashton. And the reason I've mentioned Molly is because, sadly, Tony died on the 26th of January. I haven't got any information about a funeral yet, but again, as soon as I know anything, I'll let you know. But please keep all those people in your prayers at this time. Uh, we've got a number of funerals that have come up. So what I'm going to do in a minute now, I'm going to mention the names of those people and then we'll just offer those to God. So Jack Hutton, Sylvia Whitehouse, Ronald Williams, Charles Wingett, George Adams, Glenna Williams, Vera Coletti, Ronald Fish. Lord, we just bring all these people to you and we pray for all those people who are grieving at this time that they would know your peace and love. Amen. On Tuesday, the 2nd of February, 6 o'clock, we're going to have an evening prayer on Zoom. The Zoom details are on the pew sheet. If you can't get on Zoom to join us, what we're going to do is we'll record the entirety of that service because it's, it's literally like a half an hour service. And as soon as it's recorded, I'll put it up on YouTube and email out the details so you can follow along with the service. If you're following along with the service and for those people who are joining on Zoom, you'll need to have, if you can, a candle near you because we're going to light a candle in the service. And I think that'll be lovely just to connect us all again. Finally, we've got birthdays. So we've got Seth Sim, Margaret Henshaw, Jim Price, Dennis Price, David Thomas and Jill Cunningham have all got birthdays. Sadly, you haven't got the little popper, but I'm just going to say a quick prayer for you all. Dear Lord, we thank you for these people whose birthdays are celebrated this week. We pray that they would know your love. I'm sure they know your love, but they that would feel it as part of them. We give thanks for everything that they do for our church community and we pray that they would be strengthened by your love this year ahead and that we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Have a wonderful birthday, everybody. We now have our next hymn. of your love is shining in the midst of the dark and shining jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine fill this land Flood the 
gaze on your kingly brightness So our faces display your likeness Ever changing from glory to glory Mirrored here may our lives tell your story Shine on me Shine on me Shine Jesus shine Fill this land with the Father's glory Blame spirit place Set our hearts on fire Flow river flow Flood the nations with grace and mercy And so now we come to the thanksgiving. We celebrate together the gifts and grace of God. We take this bread, we take this wine to follow Christ's example and obey his command. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is always right wherever we are to thank you and to praise you, God, our Father and King forever, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him you made us in the whole universe. When your Holy Spirit came to Mary, Jesus was born as one of us. He loved us so much that he died for us. On the first Easter day, you raised him to life and death and evil were conquered forever. At Pentecost, you gave the Holy Spirit, as Jesus promised, to help us live as your children. So here on earth with angels and archangels and with everyone in heaven, we praise your name and say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father in heaven, listen to the prayer we make in Jesus' name. Through the Holy Spirit's power, gentle as a dove, may this bread and this wine be for us Jesus' body and blood. Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took the bread. He thanked you, broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends and said, Drink from this cup because this is my blood, the new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me. And so let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. And so we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we pray together our spiritual communion. 
O blessed Lord, in union with the faithful throughout the world, at every altar of your church where the Eucharist is being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that may always be united to you. Since I cannot now receive you in the sacrament, I invite you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with my heart and mind and soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me so that I may live and die in your love. Give thanks to the Lord for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. The Lord be with you and also with you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may be filled with hope and love and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.